D, Dave, Deb, Doug, Dan, Darren, Daryl. Those are the Durkee kids. You've got a one in seven shot of guessing which one my dad is. One in five if you factor in that my dad is, in fact, a man. When I was a kid, my parents' sister and I would make our annual road trip out to Michigan to visit the whole family. My grandma had this rinky-dink cottage in the woods on Glen Lake, and spending a week or two there was the highlight of my year every year. And every year, right when the time came for our trip back to the Great White North, I always had a craving to play Animal Crossing. It didn't matter if I had just started the new Pokemon Ranger or was elbow deep in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, I really liked Pokemon. But it was an immutable fact of life that by the time we crossed the Ohio State border, I was up and at them catching fish and doing tasks for my animal neighbors. Unless you've been living under a rock for the past two years, you know what Animal Crossing is. There's no need for me to explain. However, there's something about the series that's just special in a way that might be impossible to describe, but if you'll indulge me for the next few minutes, I think I'd like to try. I believe it was the late, great Gandhi who once said, video games appeal to the male fantasy. And if that fantasy is eating absolute shit while wearing a King Tut mask, then I'm Freddy friggin' Mercury. I've had Wild World for so long that I don't even remember buying it or receiving it. It's just always been a part of my life, and an important one at that. Wild World just threw you into a town with no belongings and no parents telling you to do your geometry homework. My childhood pleased that, no, I don't need to know what a triangle is, I can pay off my house with red snappers, fell on deaf ears. The town is inhabited with talking animals, but as an adult, I'm realizing the most unrealistic part was getting alone with no deadline or interest. I grew up on the Game Boy and DS and had enough games where you're an unkillable god king or the chosen hero of the world, but as a kid, sometimes the most empowering thing is just being a guy. Nothing was forcing me to show up to KK Slider's shows on time, but every Saturday at 7.55 I'd boot up my DS and get ready. It was a ritual. Change shirt, head to the museum, get to the roost a few minutes early, hit up my main squeeze Brewster, drink a coffee from his polygonal mugs, pretend it was hot chocolate because I didn't even like coffee, spend a few minutes listening to the coffee shop song, and then settle in for a show as the lights dim and the credits roll by. It felt independent. I am not an early bird, far from it. My alarm clock measures as a magnitude 5 earthquake and makes me solve math problems to snooze it, and yet I've still started to become immune to it. But on the lake, I was up at the crack of dawn every morning. I vividly remember waking up and hobbling out to the porch, still in my sleeping bag like a little polyester cocoon, staring out at the lake bleary-eyed on a misty Michigan morning. I would sway back and forth on the squeaky porch swing and just play Wild World while the sun rose. I'd be decorating my house and bopping to Steep Hill, the best KK Slider song, Don't At Me but I'd have the volume slider set to half because I was really listening for the sound of cars pulling onto gravel. To my ears, gravel meant the band was getting back together. Gravel meant comforting faces I hadn't seen for a year or more. Gravel meant long time no see, or look how big you've grown, or you got your braces off. Gravel meant more people I could show off my little town to and introduce to my best friend, Agent S. Sorry, she's my bestie. You can't have her. And then middle school rolled around and well, <laughs> it was pretty clear I wouldn't be getting a girlfriend anytime soon. Luckily, the 3DS came out, which, honestly, thousand times better. I couldn't afford it immediately, but I saved and saved and saved my allowance, and a year or two later, my mom took me to that golden mecca, GameStop. It also just so happened to be the day before our trip to the lake. And as I checked out, I saw New Leaf on the shelf, and I melted. I had no idea this game had been made. Nobody talked about Animal Crossing at school. It was all the newest Kawadubi game, or Silly Bands. The DS game. So, a new Animal Crossing? A sequel to my favorite little comfort game? How do you improve on the perfect world to get lost in? I had so many questions and so few answers, so I nabbed it, and the cashier rang it up, and I was ten bucks short. Without even thinking, I saved whatever game I was playing, popped out the cartridge, and traded in my black DS Lite for $10 in store credit. I'll never financially recover from this, but I don't regret it. New Leaf was awesome. The whole car ride home and the entire time setting up the 3DS, I was hyping it up in my mind, and it still blasted my little acne-riddled face off. 
I didn't play it quite as much as Wild World just by virtue of being older and having less free time, but I still did my time. I put in work as town mayor, and I caught fish, and I made friends, and I vacationed on Tortimer Island, and every year I shared it all with my probably very uninterested family. Grandma wasn't super well-versed in the magic light rectangles that are so pervasive these days. The most time she ever spent with the screen was her electronic picture frame, and we set that up for her. So it'll always stick with me when I showed her the depth slider on the 3DS, and it blew her mind. To be fair, it blew my mind too. In hindsight, the 3D was a bit of a gimmick, but back then, it felt like the future. And then the future came, and 2020 rolled around, and the FDA restricted eating bats just a second too late. And right as the proverbial shit hit the fan, Animal Crossing New Horizons came out. I had been looking forward to this game since it was announced, but because of the state of the world when it came out, that shit really hit different. In quarantine, we were all craving a taste of ordinary. Life simulators became normalcy simulators. Growing up, my parents never really got into video games. The most I could get out of them was forcing my dad to sit next to me while I played the water levels in Mario Galaxy because I was too scared to do them alone. Look at this thing and tell me it's not nightmare fuel. But in the midst of the pandemic, my mom started to come downstairs and watch me play New Horizons. And then I taught her to fish, and you know how the old adage goes. Give your mom a fish, she'll eat for a day. Teach your mom how to fish, and she'll become an MLG Pro Cloud9 Esports Gamer. Tom Nook, the Capitalist Manifesto. So then I would wake up in the morning and find her fishing on her own. And then we made her an account on my island, and she started paying off her own house with red snappers. And in the summer of 2020, I drove to visit my girlfriend's place up in Massachusetts. And like day two or three of being gone, I get a call from my mom saying, Hey, so... I might have gone into Animal Crossing withdrawal, and I kind of bought my own Switch. I'll never forget that phone call. But, you know, 2020 didn't like to leave anyone unpunished. As of recording this, I just got back from my grandmother's memorial, and, and it's bittersweet. Bitter because she somehow raised seven goobers, and then they went off and made a bunch of grand goobers, and in the midst of all that, she taught me a lot. And then she left, and I thought I was ready. I don't think you really can be ready. But sweet, because for a short time, the whole family was back together, which has become exceedingly rare these days. Sweet, because we sold the cottage to a wonderful young family that is going to have so much fun with it. We made our memories, and now it's their turn. Sweet, because the ceremony was beautiful, and you know what? There wasn't a single person there that I hadn't bragged to about my cool blue squirrel friend, or the constellation I made, or the great white shark I caught way back when I was three feet tall. Thanks to Nintendo, I have this wacky little cartridge that has vividly captured all my memories in it. I hear the title music, and I'm in the car watching the hills roll by, anxiously waiting for the one hill that you can finally see the lake behind. I go fishing, and I'm back on Little Glen with my Uncle Doug, catching perch and bluegill and taking pictures to show Grandma later. I dig up a fossil, and I'm back unearthing Petoskey stones, aka really cool rocks, and polishing them to reveal their little hidden fossil patterns. I walk through the pixelated JPEG trees and look at the constellations, and I'm back on the porch watching the stars through the clearing in the tree canopy. I grow a money tree, and I hear my grandma telling me about the local money plants, her favorite wild shrub that cropped up all around the cottage. So I thought I'd plant one of my own. If I can get this to actually grow, I'd like to introduce you all to Norma someday. And that's what makes Animal Crossing so special. Wild World has my heart and soul and the best parts of my childhood baked into its dinky mid-2000s programming and it'll always be my favorite. That being said, Thanksgiving is coming up, and there's nothing I'm looking forward to more than going home and grabbing a New Horizons hot chocolate with my mom and dad and dog, all of us half asleep on the couch. If there's a point buried somewhere in this mess, it's this. After recently grappling with the mortality of my loved ones, having a near-death experience of my own, and getting out of a long-term relationship with the person I thought I was going to marry, I've had a lot to think about. 
And I've really come to know that when push comes to shove, and even the things you once thought constant suddenly change drastically, the ones who will always have your back are your family. At the risk of sounding like Vin Diesel, your family's gonna be there, especially when you're driving real fast and getting real angry. I, I haven't seen Fast and Furious. And family doesn't have to be genetic. I'm stupid lucky to have grown up in a household where blood is thicker than water, but I have just as much family that I'm not related to. The important thing is that these are the people who will make you feel safe in this beautiful ass, shit ass world. And my God, have they come in clutch recently. It should come as no surprise that I like video games, probably a little too much. But if I could send a carrier pigeon back in time and say anything to little snot-nosed kid Ben, I'd say this. Hey, man, maybe shut the DS for now. Trust me, you'll have ample time to feel like an adult when you are one, and it's a hell of a lot harder to feel like a kid again. Right now, just share a couple extra laughs with them. Cherish this time with your big, dumb, loud, obnoxious, overindulgent, borderline alcoholic, hilarious, compassionate, supportive, wonderful, kick-ass family. And get a fucking haircut. If making this video has made me realize anything, it's that I'm damn proud to be a Durkee. I mean, it's in my channel name, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I think it speaks for itself that when I dusted off my 16-year-old copy of Wild World, my guy got out of bed, ran downstairs, stepped out into a little town called Durkia.